Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Behind the Screen, an iconic uh, production show. I am JM, the host of the show, and this is a show where I just uh, hang out and chat about RPGs, board games, game design, writing, uh, tips, tricks, uh, all of these sorts of things. Uh, hello to my uh, good friend who I see in chat. Uh, so anyway, we are going to talk today about ideation. And so ideation is a process that you're doing without really, um, maybe doing without even being aware of it. It's really the, the, the beginning of understanding what it is you want to write. And at this point, you may be saying, well, I know, I know how this works. Like, I sit down, I write adventures all the time. It's great. It's wonderful. I don't have a problem with it. And that's great. Uh, for me, however, ideation is probably the most important part of the writing and the design process. I need to establish the boundaries uh, that I want to of the workspace that I I want to uh, be in. Hey, Rook, good to see you. Oh, Rook, that's amazing. Thank you, sir. Big shout out to uh, uh, patron and fan of the show, uh, Rook Cat, who just gifted uh, some subscriptions to people in the channel. Want to say a big thanks to him. Uh, we are, uh, so we talked a little bit about boundaries on our, uh, the Grand Campaign podcast, which our very first episode of that was at just 8 a.m. Central on Saturday. You can go check that out on our YouTube channel, or if you're a subscriber, see it here on Twitch for the remainder of the week. Hey, Bob, good to see you. Thanks for the hype, buddy. Um, so ideation and Bob will... I think Bob will back me up on this because ideation is the same for essentially any creative process. You want to establish the goals. You want to establish the boundaries that you can work within. You want to establish the, the scope and the themes. Uh, if you want an artist to design um, steampunk dwarves, you want to let them know that so they don't come back with, you know, um, wildly attractive sea dwarves. I'm looking right at you, Bob. So... Uh, we're going to start by doing some ideation today on a dungeon that I am building for my home Jackals campaign. And possibly this can go out and may go out and see the world in some form or format. But that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. You are the number one fan, sir. You deserve to be addressed. Well, you know what? You are right. Rook has brought up the fact that he is the number one fan. And I think that is an undisputed title until... Uh, Fandome 2022, where Rook will have to defend the title and the belt inside the cage. Uh, tune in for that episode whenever we happen to do that. There are titles, uh, Bob Crumb. There are always titles. So, what, I, uh, what I'm doing with uh, this uh, dungeon that I'm building is I wanted to do kind of a mega dungeon, maybe not a mega dungeon. You do get a cage, uh, and uh, your choice of a ladder or chair, uh, Rook, as the defender. Um, so I want to do a mega dungeon, maybe a kilo dungeon, something a little smaller. I'm stealing that term uh, from uh, the Undercity, I believe. But essentially, it's going to be my homage to Moria, my homage to. Um, Dwemer Mount, Undermountain, um, the uh, terrifying deaths of Kilajus, which if you know that reference, good on you. Uh, I'm, I, now we're, now we're going to be uh, handing out titles. Well, I don't know, Bob. I mean, High Lord, High Lord kind of puts you above the, uh, the number one fan how about we do how about we we leave rook at number one fan and you can be the scion and paragon of things creative and glorious i uh, hereby bequeath upon you that title um i don't know why i did the cross i think it should have been uh, more of a knighting thing so we're going to jump over to uh scrivener and again scrivener is kind of what i use for my ideation process and uh scrivener is great for just developing something so basically you can come in here and we're going to say no, Echiazero, uh, which is uh, in my in my in world game. Uh, this is uh, it's, it's the word. It's it means the twice cursed house. And so, uh, yeah. So Bob, if you haven't tried Scapple, it's by the same people who developed Scrivener and. Uh, 
you can import directly into Scrivener. It's a mind mapping process. You can come in here and you can, you know, let's make this a blue bubble and kind of put it up here. And we'll make that. I think I can. Uh, do, do, do. We'll make that bigger and bolder. I'm sure my. My wife would have issues with how I'm using words. Scapple, S-C-A-P-P-L-E. It's from Literature and Latte as well, just like uh, Scrivener is. So what is my goal here? Well, so let's, let's make a goals tab. Uh, I, want a, I want a mega dungeon. Uh, it needs to be tied into my world. And the goal of this dungeon is I want to have the themes of um, loss, horror, um, and darkness as my main themes. And I'll kind of give you some background on the uh, uh, why I'm doing all this. But essentially, during the ideation process, process. There are no bad ideas. There are just not great ideas. And as you're going around doing um, ideation uh, for whether it's for an adventure or a character or a novel or a piece of art, uh, the goal here is to get a lot of ideas out on the page and then during a, a revision process kind of come back and separate them out. Uh, maybe rework, merge a couple together, uh, take away some, uh, add new ones in, but essentially, at this point, we're just trying to get all of this idea on paper. And so I will always come back to, there we go, always come back to my goals because um, these are the these are going to be the boundaries that I'm going to be designing in. So what is Ekiazaru? So Ekiazaru is a Hanuk mansion. And that means something very specific if you are following along with the Jackal's worlds or uh, timeline. Essentially, um, Ekiazaru was originally uh, Ekur Enir, which meant uh, the bright house, which is like a mountain. And it was a refuge, a mansion, a hall uh, for the Han, which are a, a group of people who no longer exist in my world. They, are, they have been lost uh, to the annals of history. And um, to uh, Becca, if you're watching this at some other point, no, you won't get to play Han. That's just not something I, uh, I am planning on doing with, uh, with the, the world. So, one of the other things that I want to do uh, with Hekiazaru is I want to create some new mechanics because I always love Restar. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, new mechanics. And the mechanics I specifically am going to be focused on are exploration and um, what I'm calling reclaiming. Uh, so basically what I want to be able to do with this dungeon is have some new mechanics that introduce new seasonal actions. So if you're not familiar with Jackals, essentially the year is broken up into two seasons. You get to go on two adventures a season, and then in between you have a downtime action, an action that you have to um, do something with the money and the time and, and all of these other things that you you find during your adventuring phase. And so essentially what's going on with, um, with these, I want to simulate kind of a reclaiming or a establishing of a new city or town, possibly in the depths of of this Hanuk mansion. And so um, those are all things I'm going to be keeping in mind as I'm doing this. So one of the neat things that I'm hoping to do with behind the screen is when I hit different points, when I hit, um, uh, you know, I'm going to try and put polls up on the Patreon uh, and in our Discord. So if you, uh, if you follow us on Patreon and are at even our bottom tier, you get access to our Discord channel where we routinely do polls, we ask, uh, we answer questions, we invite people to come play games with us. And essentially, um, I may put up some different polls for Ekiazaru, different, different design spaces, that sort of thing. So essentially, uh, the Han lived in this mansion 
thousands of years ago, and uh, during a great war, it became cursed. And it was cursed by uh, sort of my, uh, my big bad, if you will, who has not appeared really in any of the, in any of the um, games or worlds that I have run. There's like a mention of him in the uh, Fall of the Children of Bronze campaign uh, book, but I don't really call him out in any way, uh, shape, or form. But essentially the idea here is that the mansion failed because it was cursed, and it was cursed twice. So the two curses are, um, um, and I've done a little bit of work, so I'll pull these, I'll pull these out and put them into our, uh, into our bubble. Why is it cursed? So the first one is this curse that is called uh, the Isrik Isu. Uh, which again, if you know me at all, you know I love languages and making making them up. But essentially, this is the theft of possession. Uh, so when this curse descended down upon um, the mansion, it stole the past from the Han. It sort of devoured their minds, stealing the memories of their their lives. And slowly and gradually, like a string pulled from a tunic, their minds unwound. And so essentially, these creatures, uh, this curse twisted the Han, who had a memory that went back to the dawn of, of light in the world, and slowly consumed their minds. And so I think I, I have this idea that the Han that still exists in this mansion, they are, are the shades and the, the remnants of this one great people, once great people who have no memory of who or what they were. Uh, the other uh, thing that came in and uh, cursed the house, sent by this uh, this evil um, uh, this evil tyrant, if you will, is what is known as uh, the Kashaptu, which is a rapic of hunger. So, um, ooh, let me change this to here. It's good if I uh, keep my naming conventions together. So, uh, a rapic in my world is a uh, a formless spirit, a spirit that is um, was once a ruler or a uh, divine entity that has um, rebelled and fallen into darkness and uh, and ice. Essentially, uh, they're all sort of associated with with ice, with corruption, with 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 freezing. They're sort of the the demonic spirits of of jackals. And so this, this very powerful, this named creature was sent to devour the Han. And so uh, uh, the Kashaptu is this rapic of hunger. So if, they, if, if the other one stole, oh, no, it is. No, this, is this is the word I want. Uh -huh. Need more coffee, Bob. Stat. Uh, so this creature stole the future of the Han. So it, uh, it hovers over... Um, the thresholds and it it steals or it slaves what few children were born to the Han and it possessed them. Um, it took them deep into the match of deaths and they're twisted their forms and their spirits. So there are now there are now these specific forms of demons that exist just within the mansion. So when I get to designing these creatures and these curses. Um, what I would love is uh, for the people in behind the scenes to throw out ideas for what they would do, and we'll build monsters for jackals together. Um, and then, uh, about all I know of the dungeon, let's do this. Let's build this. Let me make sure you guys can see all of this. Awesome. So there is uh, there's going to be... This is the best part about uh, Scaffold. You can kind of use it for anything. Um, what I have is the idea is that there is, in the center of this dungeon, there is um, the Elenor, which is uh, the Ascended City. So this will be the main dungeon level in, in, in my, in my uh, dungeon. And come on, formatting. Uh, let's give this a apply a new note style. Let's do it as a green bubble. 
and uh, just know, Bob, that when I get to the point where I want, I need to start getting some art for this thing, I will probably be like, hey, Bob, you want to do some art? Uh, if you guys don't follow Bob Crumb right now, you can see Mr. Bob Crumb in the chat. If you are on YouTube watching this, Mr. Bob Crumb, uh, go check him out on YouTube. He is a good friend of both Iconic Production and, and myself. Uh, he does a Twitch stream where he uh, he's an artist. He'll do a, a ton of art. He just finished up a Kickstarter. I watched the video yesterday, Bob. It was awesome. Thank you for the update uh, with this just amazing deck of cards. And I'm hoping that he's going to be doing uh, uh, more of that uh, here soon. You can go back and check out all of his great videos. Um, he did a bunch of uh, Disney-inspired ones doing kind of the classic figures in a very twisted and, and wonderful, like a wonderful, like monstrous twist on them. And I uh, loved that series, Bob. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll get back to our comic someday soon, too. Uh, he did the first four pages of a Weird West comic that uh, I just adore. So, so this is the Ascended City. This is going to be my main thoroughfare uh, from where the players will enter to the other side of the mountain range. But then also, I have this idea for... Um, and I need a good name for it, but I'm calling it right now the Grand Stair. And so the idea is, is that the Grand Stair will, will run, I should be able to, to do this. Let's see here if I can do this. Uh, I kind of wanted that to rotate, but... I don't remember how to do that. So the idea is that the grand stair will go both above and below and will link all of the other levels of the dungeon at least as long as it is uh, passable. Uh, and so the goal is, as we're going through this, is we're going to actually lay out next Tuesday, we're going to lay out all of the different levels for the dungeon. So if you are a Patreon backer, if you are a, uh, if you follow us here on Twitch or on YouTube, uh, or if you're on our Discord, and you have things from dungeons that you love, bring them on Tuesday. I want to hear them. I want to incorporate them into Ekiazaru and put my own Zaharet spin on them. But I think it'd be a fun thing to kind of design all of this together as we're... Um, as we're doing behind the screen, uh, again, sort of together. This is going to be a, a variety show. Some days I won't be doing Eki Azaro, <laughs> the dumb waiter. I could probably translate that into uh, into Luwafi and make it sound super cool. Maybe the mute servitor. Um, yeah, no, uh, Ben will definitely bring that delightful uh, old school feel to this to this dungeon, the dumpster. Uh, it could be the dumpster if it has like kind of a, a spiral that goes down. So yeah, that's kind of what we're going to be doing uh, over the next several weeks. We're going to be laying out right. No bad ideas, Bob. No bad ideas in ideation. Uh, at some point, I think I remember telling you about the one time in a marketing ideation that we did get the one bad idea that, that proved the rule. Um, so this is going to be the layout for our next several weeks on Tuesdays, kind of talking about designing a dungeon. Um, we'll talk about kind of the themes that you should put in a dungeon, how much depth you should go into. I don't know that I'm necessarily going to flesh out Eki Azaru to the point where every room is keyed and every room has a different thing uh, because again this is going to be an underground city so part of it is going to be providing gms and this will i'll put this in goals provide sweeping descriptions and zones so that GMs have plenty of room to add their own material. Uh, that's something that I just, that's something that's very important for me when GMing. That's something that's very important um, for me when I'm writing and designing in the Jackal space. Um, I want to have plenty of room for GMs to add their own twist. And part of that goes back to um, 
Greg Stafford's gifting of Glorantha to the fans, and where he says, your Glorantha will vary, uh, or may vary, depending on which version of the acronym you're using. He basically said, hey, this is just a springboard for however you want to use that. Uh, it's something we talk a lot about on the Exploring Glorantha podcast, which we do on the third Saturday of every month, but you can go check those out on our YouTube channel as well. So that's kind of where we're going to talk about today. We've got our, our goals, our themes, what the curse is, the name of the dungeon, and kind of a general cruciform shape of, of this dungeon. And so on Thursday, uh, instead of actually uh, continuing this dungeon, we're going to uh, talk about Warhammer Fantasy 4th Edition, uh, a role-playing game that I, I love, that is on my shelf. Uh, where is it at? Oh, right up here. All of this is Warhammer 4th uh, Edition. And Bob, hopefully you can join there because I know I've been trying to get you into uh, Warhammer 4th Edition. And I would love to have you here so we can chat about uh, why, why this version of the game is, in my opinion, one of the best that has ever been produced. Um, I'm a big fan of the old world. I'm a big fan of Warhammer, uh, both the tabletop role-playing game and uh, the Warhammer uh, fantasy battles game not sold on Age of Sigmar. Uh, you can prove me prove me wrong, uh, but we're going to be doing a review of Warhammer Fantasy Fourth Edition by Cubicle Seven on Thursday. So my cup of coffee here is almost done. If you like what you do, we do please consider uh, following here on Twitch. Thanks to uh, Rookcat, the number one fan, for the gifts of the subscriptions that happened today. Thanks to our uh, Scion and Paragon of all things creative and glorious, uh, Mr. Bob Crumb, for uh, hanging out with us today. Uh, Restar, we're handing out titles. They just can't be better than number one fans, so I will, I will have to tune them down. But if if you uh, if you would like to toss in for a title, um, if you like what we do, uh, please consider looking at all the other shows we do behind the screens now twice a week. Uh, we do a uh, 13th Age podcast. The next one will be going up uh, in a week from yesterday on the 7th where we're going to be actually interviewing the Pelgrim Press official 13th Age stream uh, cast and crew uh, as well as the GM there. And then check out the Exploring Glorantha campaign or the Exploring Glorantha show on YouTube or uh, on Twitch when we do it uh, the third Saturday of every month, and the first episode of the Grand Campaign, where uh, Richard Rowland and uh, Josh Kelly and I talk about this very specific model of uh, campaign and why we love it, uh, just went live on YouTube. Go check it out. I don't know who Indigo Dragon is, but they said this is already in their top five uh, RPG podcasts, and so I will take that. Uh, uh, Restar, you can claim uh, the number two title uh, with all of the glory that goes with it. So uh, that's it for Behind the Screen today. I am uh, JM. Thank you all for joining me. Thanks to uh, Rook and Restar and Bob uh, for joining us here. To everyone else who joined and did not comment in the chat, don't. Uh, just glad to see you here. Atten and uh, uh, True Dalbert, uh, good to see you. And uh, we will be back on Thursday with a review and a look at Warhammer Fantasy Role Playing 4th Edition. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, stay gaming, and I will see you all on Thursday. Have a great one.